Hey guys, Akil Mohadeen here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're continuing on with the CPU project, and today we're going to be learning about storage, the beginnings of storage, by learning the SR latch. Now, storage is more of a difficult concept to wrap your wrap your brain around than it is material to go through. So, just to start off, what we're going to be doing is latch storage. So, latch storage is... I guess you can understand what storage is. Storage is when you hold a bit information. So normally when we've done uh, when we've done some sort of like gate, like an AND gate, right? Usually when we do an AND gate, A, B, Y. In order for in order for Y to be true, usually we've had to press A and B and hold it for as long as we want Y. But for storage, you press like a and B once, and then Y will stay on forever until uh, the circuit loses power or until you do something to reset Y back to zero. So that's what we're going to be learning today, keeping and holding a value uh, basically forever as long as there's power in the circuit. And the way we do this is with this NOR gate combo. I don't know if it's showing up in the camera. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see it. Okay. And... Okay. Hopefully it's focused, but this kind of looks like a weird circuit, and this is the full circuit that we're going to build, and these are two NOR gates, and here's the uh, truth table for a NOR gate, just in case you've forgotten, and so what we're doing is we're having A and B go into a, two separate NOR gates, and then the outputs of each respective NOR gates goes into the input of the other NOR gate, and first things, like your first impressions might be that hey, wouldn't both these LEDs always be on, though? And it's actually not true. And, we'll d and I'll show you why when we demonstrate this circuit out. But actually, only one of these LEDs can be on at a time. If this was Q and this was on, then this would be off. If this was on, then this is off. These two are always opposites, and you guys will see that when we go through uh, all the different combinations that you can make. So, I built the circuit right here. Uh, it's not a two terrible of like a circuit diagram to understand, right? But it's just a little bit weird. And looking at it on the breadboard will kind of help you make more sense of it. So I built it here. Okay, so as soon as power comes on, you can see that only one of these LEDs comes on. This one here comes on while this one over here is off, right? Now this top button is A and this bottom button is B. So watch what happens when I press A. Nothing, right? But what happens when I press B? It switches. The power switches from this LED to this one. And when I press A, the power switches back. When I press B, power switches back. And notice how I'm not pressing anything. See, my hands are right here. No, I'm not pressing anything, but yet that value stays there forever until, uh, let's zoom out. The power stays there forever until I unplug it, right? So this is what we saw. Both the outputs were off, so this was zero, right? This value was zero, and this value was zero because nothing was plugged in there. So this value was one, nor gate, right? Zero, zero. Oh wait, you guys can't see that. Um, but this is zero, this is zero, nor gate, so this is one. So this is one, and this is zero, so one, zero, makes this zero, and this is zero. So this output is on, and this output is not on. And I stopped drawing the resistors from up here just because they make it look a little bit more complicated and we're just kind of go for a concept thing than a full on what is the circuit diagram, right? So this is what we saw. And you notice how I wrote depends here? That's because depending on what this actually means is see we the way we thought out the circuit was from the perspective of A, right? So we designated this first value here as zero. But what if we went from the perspective of B, right? So this is zero, and let's just call this zero, right? Because nothing's plugged in there yet. We just put power in the circuit. This is zero, this is zero. So then this would be one, this would be one, this would be zero, this would be zero, but this would be one, right? So it actually depends. And the factor that makes it depend is which of your NOR gates is faster than the other. So for me, it actually is consistently one of the NOR gates is faster than the other, so this uh, output is always on no matter what happens right this outputs always always on and For you though, it might be this one. 
So what happens in storage though is what you want to do is you want to you want to press either A or B to make the value known, right? Because you don't know what the value would be because it depends on which one's faster, right? So to make the value known, you either press A or B, and this way you get a known value in the LEDs. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but let's go on to the next one. We press A, right? When you press A, this is one. This is one. And when, as soon as one input is on, right? As soon as one input is on for a NOR gate, the output is automatically zero. So this is on, so the output must be zero. So this is zero, and this is zero, so this is one, and this is one, right? So this output is one, and this output is zero. And that's what we saw here, right? So press A, and this output is one, right? It was already one, but we press A and that, that outputs one, okay? Now, going on to the last one, okay? Pressing B. So we press B, so we automatically know that this output is false because this is true. So this is false, this is false, this is true, this is true. So this output is on, and this output is off, okay? And that's what we saw here. Right? We press B, this output is off, and that output is on. Right, so everything's lining up pretty well right now. Now, here is the truth table that we're kind of looking at. I didn't write down the first ones or the last ones. Like, I didn't write down 0, 0, or 1, 1, because those depend on which... Uh, NOR gate is faster, so there's really no point in writing down a truth table because, you know, it's all dependent on how fast your NOR gates are. But for here, these values, these bottom truth tables, the 1, 0, and the 0, 1s, will remain true for everybody. So when A is 1 and B is 0, output is 0, and the inverse output, right, because remember how I said in the beginning that the outputs are always opposites of each other, right? So, and what we're saying is Q, Q is equal to this one, and this is going to be equal to Q opposite, right? So the one that comes from A is going to be Q, and the one that comes from B is going to be Q opposite. So, A is 1, B is 0, Q is 0, and Q opposite is 1. A is 0, B is 1, Q is 1, Q opposite is 0. Now watch what happens when I do this, okay? Forget that. Forget it. Now what do we have? If A is 1, the value is 0. If B is 1, the value is 1. Or in other words, pressing A resets the value of Q back to 0, and pressing B sets the value of Q to 1. So when we say it's called an SR latch, SR stands for set, reset, latch. This is what it is. So, what I'm going to do for you guys is do you guys a little favor and remove that LED. Okay? And we're setting it to 1. B resets it. A sets it again. B resets it. A sets it again. Right, so we'll have eight of these for one byte. So if we want the bit in one of those bytes to be one, then we'll press this button. If we want one of those, if we want one of those uh, bits to be zero, then we'll press this button and it'll reset it to zero and it'll stay there. So this is how RAM and CPU cache works. SR latch, set, reset, latch. This is the beginnings of data storage. Uh, but not hard drives, because those retain their values. SSDs and hard drives retain their values even while power is lost from the circuit, but not this one. Please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.